Good morning and welcome to church. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us today on this special Sunday, on this special online service. We hope that you will feel at home and join us on site when we come back on site again. Come join us this Saturday, 17th June at 2 p.m. for our Golden Emmanuel Ministry service at Level 3 Praise Hall at our Upper East Coast campus, where Pastor Cynthia Ui will be sharing with us the seven amazing benefits of the blood of Christ. Now, we're going to ask you to join with us in worship to our God as you worship together at home. Good morning, church. So good to have you here with us. Come and join us as we praise Him this morning. morning Lord as we sing this song champion we remember every time you have championed us every time your mercy came through for us oh Lord so even right now as you sing just remember the goodness of God and just let his presence come and fill your heart just let him touch you even right now wherever you are because he is so good and he is for you 
So come on, let's just worship Him with this song.
Good morning, church. This morning, I want to talk to you about drawing closer to God. Before we proceed, let's pray. Father, we commit this time to you. We ask that you will unpack your word. We ask of you, Holy Spirit, to speak to each of us personally, to every listener, every viewer, every hearer of your word. Bless our time as we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Drawing closer to God. What is this all about? The scripture text that has been given is from James 4, Verse 8, James says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. What is this all about? You find this phrase, knowing God, both in the Old Testament, uh, is by the Hebrew word yada, and in the New Testament, this word gnosis. And both these words mean an experiential knowledge of God. And it is not a casual acquaintance, you know about somebody or you know about God. But it's really knowing God intimately. And today's message is about how we ought to draw closer to God. What are the things we can do? What are the practical steps we can take to know God in a deeper way? 
Why draw closer to God? Because God Himself has declared in Je Jeremiah 9, 23, 24. God says, Let not the wise men glory in His wisdom, nor the mighty men, the strong men glory in His power, nor the rich men in His riches. But let him who glory, let him who boast. There's one thing God permits us to boast and He wants us to boast that we understand and know God. Why? Because if we do not know God, we will misunderstand God. And when we misunderstand God, we will misrepresent God as His people. There are three streams of the character of God. He's always loving, and from His loving kindness comes His mercy, His grace, His compassion, and His goodness. But God is also always simultaneously just, and also always simultaneously righteous. And He will always ask about this question, can God do anything He wants? The answer is yes and no. It is yes if it is consistent with all three mainstreams of His character. And it is no if it is only one stream. For example, you can have two gays coming together saying that they love one another and citing the fact that God is love. Yes, God is love, but that would be unrighteous because it will go against and violate the very laws of God. Jesus Himself said in John 17 verse 3 in the high priestly prayer, what is eternal life? He says that eternal life is all about knowing God. Gnosis, the Greek word, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. How do we want to draw close to God? Relationships, as in any relationship, it takes time, intentionality, effort, energy, resources to build. I was just having a conversation with a friend just the other day. I was just saying that during these three years or so of COVID, that many relationships have changed, some for the better, some for the worse. One of the main reasons for the worse is that due to the lack of contact, the lack of face-to-face -face time, the lack of spending time to bond, to build, to do things together, to go out for a meal, to chit-chat, uh, and to just keep in touch has caused the relationship to generally, gradually drift apart. As in all relationships between a husband and a wife, parents and children, between friends, between fellow church members, it takes intentionality. We must make the effort to bond in the relationship and to build together. How to draw closer to God? I want to suggest three spiritual disciplines which we must all work at. The first one is regular intake of the Word. The Word of God is depicted in food language. The Word of God is milk, bread and meat. This as we need to eat our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner to have energy, physical energy. Similarly, we need to eat the Word of God for spiritual energy. And each of these components of the Word of God is different. The purpose of the milk of the Word of God is to experience God. God wants us to experience Him. This is clearly spelled out in 1 Peter 2, verse 2 and 3 that we may drink of the milk of the Word and taste that the Lord is good, that the Lord is gracious. When was the last time you connected with God and experienced Him? I've been travelling a fair bit in the last uh, two months, uh, the early part of April <coughs> uh, to the UK, and just about two and a half weeks ago to Mongolia. And every part of the journey, uh, prayed for protection, prayed for the before, uh, the during and the after. And there were situations when things potentially could have gone south. Uh, we pray for the peace of God uh, to guard my heart and mind. Uh, pray for protection, for provision, uh, for wisdom to know what to do. Because in the ministry, there are different scenarios. Uh, meeting with different pastors, different leaders, uh, different people coming up to me, asking questions. Uh, just asking God for favour. When was the last time you experienced the grace of God, the reality of God? coming true for you. This is the first aspect of the Word of God <clears throat> that all of us are to partake. The second aspect of the Word of God is that it is the bread of the Word. The purpose of the bread of the Word of God is to hear God speaking. What is God saying to you? For some of you, the Word may be forgive. You may have been hurt, badly offended, uh, badly injured by words spoken by a friend, especially a close friend. Or you may have, have had expectations of church leadership. 
your cell leader and uh, inevitably you are hurt and when you are hurt that woundedness will cause you to hold an offense to hold a grudge even then the word of god may be forgive the reminder that vengeance belongs to the lord uh, god wants us to pursue a guilt-free no condemnation relationship with god god wants every one of his children to be unoffendable uh, or the word of god may be for some of you you're watching this uh, service online you can't make it for the church camp but are you gathering regularly are you coming to church are you coming for worship services are you coming for cell group meetings for some of you the word of god may be to flee sins don't flirt with pornography or for some of you it may be to honor your parents or when was the last time you faithfully tithe to the lord tithe giving a 10 percent of your income of your commission of your salary to the lord the third aspect of the word is that it is the meat of the word the meat of the word is to help us to discern the mixture between good and evil to discern we basically ask ourselves three questions the first question is is this of god if it is of god there will be blessings if it is of god it's in the word of god if it is of god it will bring goodness the second question we ask is is this of the evil one if it is of the evil one there will be curses if it's of the evil one, there is ill intent, there is wickedness, there is malice. There'll be all those things that violate the word of God. To discern what is of God and what is of the evil one should be a no-brainer. What we are told to discern primarily from Hebrews 5.14 is the mixture, the both good and evil. And even as you listen to me, even as you listen to every pulpit message, every exhortation by a man a woman of God. Discern which part of it is from God, which part of it is not from God, which part is evil. That's what we need to do. And Hebrews 5.14 encourages us, it's by regular practice that we learn how to discern. And we need to learn to discern correctly, sense accurately, and perceive perfectly as we go through life. Because this will undergird us and protect us all the way. So how do we draw closer to God? This is the first spiritual discipline regular intake of the word of god the second spiritual discipline is prayer connect we have to pray all the time we're encouraged to pray without ceasing we all know that in our heads but really the reality about prayer and not having walked with god for the last 57 years is all in the details what are you asking god for Jesus mentioned in Luke 11, are you asking for bread? Are you asking for an egg? Or are you asking for a fish? We have to be specific in asking God for the details. In prayer, we need to learn to pray before, during, and after an event. So like myself, in, in the travels, to pray before the trip, during the trip, and after the trip. Uh, we do, in this prayer, what we call in, what is mentioned in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 to trust God 100% and the evidence of our trusting God 100% is to acknowledge Him in all our ways better still as we grow in our prayer life as we grow to cl closer to God as we grow deeper in our relationship with God learn to pray the word of God there are many many good prayers uh, we can start to emulate uh, the prayer of Philippians 1 Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Ephesians 6, Colossians 1, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, and so on and so forth. Pray the word. It may help to memorize it a little in your best version that you like, and then paraphrase, uttering it in your own words. Like for example, the one in Colossians 1, to ask God to help us to know His will in increasing spiritual understanding, in increasing spiritual wisdom, so that we will live our lives worthy of God, worthy of His calling, to please God in every way, to bear fruit in every good work, and to keep on growing and persevering in the grace and knowledge of Christ, even as we live in a very troubled, a very stressful and anxious world. So this is the second spiritual discipline, prayer connect. Talk to God. From the moment we are consciously awake in the morning, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, during the day, as we go about our work, as we attend meetings, as we have, we have, have our meals, our breaks, 
all right? Commune with God on the train, on the bus. Commune with God as we walk in and come out in our lying down and our rising up. Commune with God, so to speak, all the time as we breathe air. That's as we all carry a mobile phone. We are connected all the time. People can WhatsApp us, they can Viber us, they can text us. Similarly, we should be constantly in connect with God. The third spiritual discipline is to build our altar of thanksgiving, praise and worship. This is something God desires. In John 4, the Father provides everything for us. But there's one thing He requires and He needs from, from us, so to speak, which is to be a true worshipper, to worship our Father in spirit and in truth. There are three aspects. The first aspect is thanksgiving. The bottom line of thanksgiving is to develop a spirit of gratefulness. We thank God for what He has done. We thank God for what He's giving to us. We thank God for what we have. That is thankfulness. Every time you be, before you eat a meal, give thanks. Every time you receive something, give thanks. Every time things go your way, there is favour, give thanks. The second dimension of this author is praise. Praise is more than thanksgiving. Hebrews 13, 15 defines praise. He says it is the fruit of lips that confess His name. Basically, praise goes one step further to ascribe to God His attribute, the character of God behind what He has done and what He has given to us. We praise that He is the Most High God. There is none like Him. There is none besides Him. We praise that He is El Shaddai, the All-Sufficient One. We praise Him that He is our strength, that He is the stronghold of our lives. Who shall we be afraid? We praise Him that He will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We shall rest in Him. All the names of God. He's a Jehovah Jireh, a provider. He's a Jehovah Shama. He will walk us through the valley of the shadow of death. He's our Jehovah Nisi, our banner and our victory. And the third dimension of this author is worship. Romans 12, 1. The bottom line of worship is surrender. It's to surrender to God everything in our lives. It's to give to God our problems. It's to hand over to Him our struggles. Whatever is bothering us, what is constantly on our radar screen, on our hearts, give it to God. Mention it to God. Does God already know all our needs? Yes. But He wants us to tell it to Him because He wants us to respond by faith. God responds to our faith. Hebrews 11.6 For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how to draw closer to God? Firstly, we need to partake the Word. Secondly, we need to lubricate our prayer connect with God. And thirdly, we need to build this altar of thanksgiving, praise and worship. Then we ask the question, what is the outcome of knowing God better? What are the outcomes of drawing closer to God? I can think of two. Firstly, we get to know God better. We get to know the ways of God. You see, in the Old Testament, the people of God do not have the indwelling Holy Spirit. And in the Old Testament, in a sense, they knew God from afar. Only a few Old Testament saints truly knew God, like Moses, like David, like the prophets. Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9, God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. For God's ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts higher than our thoughts. But in the Old Testament, when a man like Moses in Exodus 33 wanted to know God more, he told God, God, if your presence doesn't go with us, do not lead us out from here. God, Moses valued the presence of God beyond all the benefits. He knew the preciousness of the presence of God. And in Psalms 103 verse 7, we are told that God made known His ways to Moses. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Calvary makes all the difference. When Jesus died for us, we are redeemed by His precious blood. And when we are redeemed by His precious blood, the Holy Spirit can dwell in you and in me. We now have the indwelling Holy Spirit, which the Old Testament saints do not have. And right now in Christ, with the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit can reveal and will reveal, depending on our hunger and our thirst, the deep things of God. We can know the ways of God, how and what pleases God, how and what delights God, and how and what offends God. 
we can know the ways of God. And this is in a human relationship that me and my wife, she wants the toilet to be dry and clean, all right? And this time, after washing my hand and when the tabletop is uh, all splattered with water, I know that will upset her. So you get to know a person by spending time, by knowing the person, by interaction. And there's the Greek word gnosis, the Hebrew word yada. Same thing, we will know the Holy Spirit who will reveal the sovereignty of the Father in our situations. Many times we ask, where is God in all this? In our struggles, when troubles come, where is God in all this? And then the ways of God, the love of the Father. How do we know that deeper? The Holy Spirit. How do we know the Word? Jesus, the Word. How do we divide the Word? The Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of truth who will unpack the Word of truth. So we need and we have the Holy Spirit to know the ways of God. A second outcome is what I will call effective prayer. James 5.16 says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous person is powerful, it avails much. What is a righteous person? He's a brother or sister, he's a person who has right standing, right believing and right living. Your, our prayers will be effective to the degree we know we have right standing with God, that we are justified, we are completely forgiven, that we are perfect in the eyes of the Father under the blood of the Lamb. We have right standing with God, we have access to God. But many of the times, many of us struggle because we are more sin conscious than God conscious. We are not conscious of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that we already have. The devil cannot harm us, he cannot hurt us, but one of the, his main attacks is to lie and to deceive us. He causes us to doubt the Word of God. He causes us to doubt the love of God. He causes us to doubt the promises of God. And by that, we are guilt-laden, we feel condemned, and we lack the confidence to have right standing with God. So that's the first starting point. And in this whole subject matter about drawing closer to God, we need to mature, we need to move on from being very sin conscious most of the time, but most of the time, just praying 1 John 1 9 to a level of closeness with God where we have boldness and confidence. And this leads to right believing about God, right believing about ourselves in the light of God, ourselves in Christ, all the blessings that we have in Christ. And finally, the right applications, right living. As we do so, we find our press is on target. Our press will be effective. And this goes in line with 1 John 5, 14 and 15. When John talks about this confidence that you and I ought to have, that when we ask anything according to His will, the Father God will hear us. How do we know what is in His will? Because we know His Word. We've been partaking of His Word. We've been constantly connecting in prayer. And we've been building our altar of thanksgiving, praise and worship. That gives us confidence. That gives us boldness. And verse 15 of 1 John 5 says that we will have the petitions that we have asked of Him. This is the position God desires. The Father God wants you and I, as His sons and daughters, to walk at this level of intimacy with Him, this level of confidence. When God rebuked uh, the Old Testament saints in Numbers, He spoke to many in dreams and in visions, but not so with Moses. With Moses, He spoke face to face, not literally face to face, but He meant directly with nothing in between, intimacy with God, boldness and confidence. John 15, 7, Jesus says that as we abide in Him and when His Word is in us, we will ask whatever we desire, we will know what He desires. This is the position where God wants every believer to be so close to Him. James 4, 6 says, He gives more grace to the humble. As we humble ourselves, as we acknowledge God as God in our lives, he will give us that confidence to boldly always come to His throne of grace. Every day we need mercy. Mercy is not reaping the negative consequences of what we have previously sown wrongly. Every day we need mercy. The bottom line of all this, as Jesus said in John 17, 3, what is eternal life? Knowing God. This is living the abundant life. Peter also said it in 2 Peter 1 verse 2 to 4. He says, grace and peace 
can be multiplied into our lives. Imagine overflowing grace, overflowing peace, shalom, irini, the goodness of God. But it is conditional. Secondly, is in the knowledge of Jesus our Lord, His beloved Son, the Word of God. He says His divine power, the Holy Spirit, has given us everything in life, all things that pertain to life and godliness. But as we know God, as we experience the Father, we will be on this journey to live out the abundant life with more and more of God in and through us so that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. Let us pray. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray for your word to take root in, in the hearts of every listener, hearer and viewer. If you heard the word of God today, and if the Holy Spirit has stirs in your heart a desire to draw closer to God, wherever you are watching this on Zoom, watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, in the quietness of your heart, breathe a prayer. Says, Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, give me the strength. Lord, give me the ideas. Give me the creativity. Lord, give me the handles to eat of your word. To know what it means to differentiate between the milk from the bread and the meat of your word. Lord, teach me to pray. And Lord, teach me to build and strengthen, to repair my altar of thanksgiving, praise and worship. So that I can know your ways, O Lord. So that I can draw closer to you. So that I can walk hand in hand with you. So that I will always be the head and not the tail. So that I will be an overcomer as I live life in this fallen world. As I give myself to you with thanksgiving and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you as you apply the word of God, as you draw closer to Him in Jesus' name. Thank you again for joining us this morning. We hope you enjoyed the service. If you would like to respond or you would like to speak to someone, you can call us or email us and we will get back with you when we come back into town again. God bless you and we hope to see you again next week.